I, I was, I'm smiling because I'm thinking about Dua. <laughs> me too, always. Dua hand sold my book. I mean, whatever Dua tells me to do, I do. Thank so. You, <laughs> I feel like you guys became besties during that interview too. Oh yeah, we're so like fun. this. We text. Yeah. Do you? <laughs> Actually, we do text. I love that. <laughs>Hi, I'm Leah Palmieri, and welcome to Hits the Spot. Today's guest is the author of the novels Free Food for Millionaires and Pachinko. And that one's not only a New York Times bestseller and available as an audiobook now on Spotify, but it's also been deemed a masterpiece by none other than Dua Lipa herself. I am so honored to welcome Min Jin Lee to Hits the Spot. Hi, Min. Hi. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. I, I was, I'm smiling because I'm thinking about Dua. <laughs> Me too, always. I have to tell you, when you were on her podcast, At Your Service, I loved that interview so much. Okay. And that is what got me so excited to read Pachinko. So oh. it worked. So it Dua worked. hand sold my book. <laughs> yes, yes. I mean, whatever Dua tells me to do, I do. Thank so. you, Dua. I feel like you guys became besties during that interview, too. Oh, yeah, we're like so this. We text. Yeah. Do you? <laughs> Actually, we do text. I love that. <laughs> I love that Not so much. Not every day. I don't want to become yeah. a stalker, but she's she's pretty cool. Yeah, she's very cool. Um, I can't possibly compete with her, but we are so glad to have you here on Hits the Spot today. So thank you so much for joining us. Um, I did want to ask you about this now, because as an author, your work is available on the same platform as some of your favorites, such as Dua Lipa. What is that like for you to know that your audiobooks are available next to like really cool artists and podcasters? Well, it's kind of surreal. Yeah. Because you're thinking, oh, yes, Beyonce and Dua and me. <laughs> A 54-year-old <laughs> middle-aged lady <laughs> who a teaches college. Trip, but, yes. you know, I'm, I'm grateful. I'm really grateful. Yeah. There is some overlap between those two. We're going to get to it in a little bit. So some people are listening to all of I'm those I'm routinely things. confused yeah. for Dua Lipa. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, makes sense. Makes right, right. Two awesome ladies. We have much to discuss, of course. Um, but I do want to ask you about the audiobooks from your perspective as an author. Um, now, you're known for really doing your research, getting your writing right. During that process, are you also thinking about the audiobook at all, or does that come way later when the when the book is done? Well, for my the one that I'm working on right now, mm -hmm. I am actually thinking about the audiobook. Ooh. But for the first two, the first one came out in 2007 when we had things called compact discs. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but the young people out there, they're round, they're very shiny, mm -hmm. and they're about maybe eight discs for that one. Oh wow! Okay. And also because I didn't have any power as a writer, mm -hmm. I was not involved whatsoever. Mm. But it was really exciting to think that a voice would be attached to your book. Yeah. Had you ever heard somebody read your work before like that? Like, had anyone ever read your work out loud to you? No. Mm. Okay. No, it was, it's, I had such a deprived childhood. <laughs> no, I actually don't. Yeah. <laughs> this is when I start crying. Yeah. Great, great. Record time. Yeah, yeah record time. <laughs> um, and how about the people that experience your work as an audiobook rather than as like visual text, do you get different feedback from those types of people? Oh, totally. Oh. Because I think audiobooks are so intimate. They are. Right? Mm -hmm. And also you spend time with that voice for let's say 17 to 20 hours. Mm -hmm. So then I think people feel very attached to the storytelling. Also you can hear foreign words, let's say, being pronounced accurately by somebody, whereas when you're reading it, it's a very different experience. Yeah. So I do get different feedback, but I, I get, I have to say that I am very lucky in this regard. I get really nice feedback. Yeah. People are so generous. Yeah. And maybe the haters are not writing to me, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> they don't matter anyway. Right. Well, if, if there are any, I haven't gotten any horrible mail. So yeah, okay, good. It's a, like when somebody picks up one of your books, it's an adventure to go on to. So I think people are ready for the ride. So. No, I've, I've, it's really, really cool just to hear from readers always. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. And listeners. Yes, of course. Speaking of, um, we want to know a little bit about you. What kind of audiobooks are you into? Oh, I'm, I'm listening to Ann Patchett's Tom Lake. Oh, nice. Which Meryl Streep is reading. Oh. So this is the collaboration that you didn't know that you needed. Yes. But Meryl Streep is basically doing all the voices, and because she's Meryl Streep, mm -hmm. she does it quite well. Mm -hmm. And I just have a lot of fun. Yeah. It's a wonderful story about three sisters as well as a mom who had the secret past as kind of a kind of a movie star. Oh. A movie star. And she had a romance with a really hot person who's kind of a famous actor now. So 
oh, I love this. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to have to. No, it's really yeah, fun to I'm listen gonna... to. And I'm doing the dishes. I'm like, yes, tell yeah. me more. <laughs> <laughs> is that when you typically listen to audiobooks, chores and such? Chores and such. But sometimes what ends up happening is when it gets really good, you, ha- you sit down yes. and you stop doing the work. So it's yeah. fine. Um, listening to Meryl's voice, is that what made you start to think about your audiobook for your current book that you're working on? Because I'm sure she's dying to read my next yes! book. <laughs> yes! Yes! <laughs> Meryl, if you're out there, <laughs> my phone lines are open. <laughs> yes. I'll connect you. Yes, thank yeah. you. <laughs> um, I love that. So how about you are a New Yorker. Um, what was the last thing that you were listening to that had you so sucked in that you missed your stop on the subway? Oh, Actually, Shakespeare. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I really like to listen to the plays being read. Yeah. And plays are meant to be performed. Mm-hmm. So audiobooks of plays are really a logical thing. So, you know, if I'm listening to Hamlet yeah. and it's really good, I'm kind of in it. So I, that was like a super nerd answer. but I love that. Okay. That's excellent to know because actually I feel like sometimes Shakespeare can be like, a lot to read. So I feel like with different voices, that might actually get you a little bit more sucked into the story and stuff too. So yeah, and Falstaff is funny. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, great. How about podcasts? What What do you like for podcasts? Oh, so I have my informed person podcasts. Yes. Like Pivot, Daily, The yep. Journal. Mm-hmm. And those are really great. But then in terms of the creativity, like when I get a little down, I listen to Talk Easy with Sam Fragoso. Okay, who's great. really good. Mm-hmm. I also, whenever I have legal questions, I, I listen to Preet. Oh, okay, great. He's really good. I like Design Matters. So I like the creativity stuff mm-hmm. too. And then I'll even listen to like Huberman. Yes. And uh, what is it, Modern Wisdom? Right. Like, I want to know like what, what are men thinking about yeah. being superhuman? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so. um, okay, I want to talk a little bit more about some of the way that you work. So you do a ton of research, mm-hmm. and you do then you do your writing. Um, what are you listening to during both of those phases? Well, it's interesting about Spotify because I Spotify is so good at global music. Mm-hmm. So when I'm thinking about a '70s character or a '90s character from Korea mm-hmm. or Japan or in China, I can literally figure out what his playlist is. Mm. And only on Spotify can I find it. Wow. So it's not just like inspirational for me to listen to. I actually need to know what a person is listening to because I think, well, he's that kind of person. So one of my characters in my current book is a punk musician, Ooh. but he's sort of a failure. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to know like what he would listen to. And punk music is really interesting because every single area where there is punk music, there's a different sound. Mm-hmm. If you actually interview punk people, as I have, yeah. they get really territorial. They're like, oh, no, that's not really punk. <laughs> like wow. Minneapolis sound is really different than Miami sound versus L.A. punk music or New York. I mean, forget it. Like if you get a New York person and a Minneapolis person together at punk music, there might be like a fight. Yeah. <laughs> So <laughs> it's all part of your research. Though. Right, it's all part so, yeah. of my research. I'm just like, I'm just the crane person asking. Yeah. <laughs> Don't hit me. <laughs> do you make character playlists? Oh, I do. Wow. Yeah, I do. Wow. Oh, that's so fascinating. Especially because sometimes I wouldn't necessarily listen to it, but my characters would. Yes. Because my books have so many people in them. And I think what you listen to is kind of who you are. Yes. And a lot of times people won't even tell you what they listen to mm-hmm. because they feel really judged. Mm-hmm which I think is funny. I'm like, so if you listen, if you really love Taylor Swift, you should just be proud to yes. be a Swiftie because she's a genius. <laughs> Good to know. Speaking of, of people that listen to your audiobooks on Spotify, their number one artist is Taylor Swift that they also listen to for music. Oh, so there's that. Look yes. at that. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. You, yes. you got a lot of zingers today. Yeah, I do. <laughs> We've got all the facts for you, Min. Wow. Um, there's also a lot of K-pop represented on there, too. With Excellent. New Jeans and BTS. Excellent. Yeah, so, um, there's I've some... sat behind BTS. Where? Uh, at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. I was invited to a thing, and all of them sat right in front of me, and I was like, I didn't know where they were going to put me. Like, yeah. They could have put me next to the bathroom. I don't know. But they put me right behind them. Yeah. So I sat behind them, and I was so proud yes. of their comportment. Mm-hmm. They have incredible posture, and parts of the program were kind of boring. Yeah. They were so attentive, and just like uh, these are young guys. Yeah. I have a son who is 25. Yeah. About the same as them. About the same yeah. age. And I thought, oh, I, I don't know, maybe he might have been slouching or looking at his phone. They had none of that. Just kind of like this. Wow. I know. And I was like. I can't tell if I'm more impressed with that or the fact that we've used the word comportment on this show now. So <laughs> <laughs> I think 
both are pretty great achievements. No, I, I'm trying to be value add, Leah. Okay. <laughs> Doing my best here. Uh, do you have a favorite BTS song? Um, I guess I like Dynamite. Yeah, was, that's my favorite I too. I like Dynamite. Yeah, that's my it's favorite. very cheerful, and yeah. I think they really meant it to be something that was very positive. Yeah, nice. Um, well, speaking of songs too, we are entering Wrapped season. So, mm. is there anything that you can anticipate will be on your Wrapped this year? Oh, One Foot in Front of the Other by Griff. Okay, great. I that's know. a good one. It's good, right? Yeah, that's a good one. Oh, and I you know, I love Eric Nam's new Ooh. album. Yes. I love it. We love Eric Nam too. Yeah. Right? He's yes. really good. Yeah. Uh -huh. And I like the song Exist. So I, I made a reel. Grandma made a reel. Wow. <laughs> Congrats. I put, I put Exist on it. Um, we are going to get a little bit more of some of your taste in music too. But um, speaking of being a young person, one of the things that I wanted to ask you about is your Instagram bio says late bloomer. Mm. I love this. I love this. How come you consider yourself a late bloomer? Because I also feel that I am in that crowd. You are so young. <laughs> 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 and it's not easy to be young. Yeah, it's hard. It's actually really hard. These like, days. I would never be 20 again. Mm -hmm. yep. Like there isn't enough money yeah. for me to be 20 something again. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, that was painful. I start crying. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think I'm a late bloomer because everything takes me a really long time. Mm. And I published my first book when I was 38. Oh, wow. Okay. Right. And now Pachinko came out in 2017. Mm. It is really successful now. Mm. So I feel like everything for me is not instantaneous. Right. How long did it feel like it took for that book to really reach the heights that it has today? Um, it really started to sell. Like I was never an immediate New York Times bestseller. Mm. So usually books come out and they get put on the seller list right away. That was not my story. Yeah. So it came out in February of 2017, and it hit the list in December of 2017, oh, wow. okay. after the National Book Award, and after the finalists came out, and then it was a New York Times top 10, mm. and then it started to sell. Wow. Well, I'm glad it's there now. I'm grateful. Yeah. I'm grateful. So I do want to talk a little bit about Pachinko, because um, this tells a very specific story about Koreans and heritage, um, and we talked a little bit about K-pop, but what is that like to see just how huge that genre has become all over the world and how it's really exposing people to so much about that culture. Um, and I think really making people such fans of all things Korean. Well, I do think Koreans are pretty fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And I'm not even biased. <clears throat> um, um, well, first of all, I think that Korea as a government and also as a country has been trying very, very hard for a long time to become a global player in culture. Mm -hmm. So what you're seeing right now is a product of decades of work for prior generations of artists. Mm -hmm. So that makes me feel really like I'm part of a long chain of history. Yeah. I think that because I've been working on these books for such a long time and I've been a witness to it, I feel not just proud, but I feel like it feels just. Yeah. It feels just mm -hmm. because it wasn't like, you know, add water and stir. Right. And then I also see the backbreaking work of these kids who've been working so hard to yeah. become artists. I mean, I can't get over like half the people who are entertainers in Korea are triple threats. Mm -hmm. Oh, at least like, they can sing, yeah. they can dance, they can yeah. act, they can write. And I'm like, oh, my God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah. a lot of them are like models and stuff, too. Oh, They're so beautiful. <laughs> you know, I, I was once in like a behind the scenes, like a, what do you call that? Sort of like a green room kind of thing. Yes with a whole bunch of very fancy um, K-pop stars Ooh. for a K-Con, that's right. Oh, nice. I went to a K-Con because yeah. I got invited. And I'm going, are these mortals? <laughs> <laughs> I know. Wow, oh, I know. that's amazing. And I, I was like, it's okay, I don't, I'm not competing because they're 15 and yeah. I'm, you know, 100. <laughs> You're all friends. You're all, you can all be friends. Um, I want to talk about another important location to you, which is Harlem, where you live now. What impact has that culture from, you know, certainly hip hop and jazz and music like that are, are important? What has that impact has that had on you as a writer? Oh, well, Harlem is a birthplace of literature in America. Mm -hmm. So for me, when I think about Langston Hughes or James Baldwin, who have such rich origins, and Maya Angelou recently lived in Harlem until her passing. Yeah. So, and I live right in that area. So every time I walk, I think, oh, I'm part of American Letters. Yeah. Right? And then, yes. of course, you have um, the sound, the Apollo Theater. You have all these great musicians. And, of course, the history of hip hop. Yeah. I mean, I'm from Queens, and I went to high school in the Bronx, and now I live in Harlem. So I feel like 
It's totally legit. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Nobody is more hip than you. That right, is, right, that, right. That's, that's <laughs> I'm sure that's what, what they're thinking too. Yes. <laughs> Um, and so this ties back a little bit to the late bloomer thing, but um, you've been writing for so long, but your books are sort of just catching on now in Korea, too. Um, have you had a really memorable response from a Korean fan to your work? Well, it's really interesting because I published the book in 2017 and it came out in 2018 almost in Korea. That was my one publisher. And then recently it was republished by another publisher mm -hmm. and retranslated. And last year... Here's a flex. It was the number one novel in the country last year. Yes. So this is like the late bloomer thing, yeah. right? So it yeah. comes out in 2018, and then in 2022, it's the number one book for like every category for fiction. And then so I go to the thing, I go to all these events, and I, and I got all these really nice prizes and stuff yeah. with like money. And Sweet. <laughs> you know, it was like, money, wow. Yeah. <laughs> it's not just a plastic trophy. <laughs> and then you go, and I meet all these young people who've read the book, and then older people who've read the book. And they have such an emotional response. Mm -hmm. And they're sobbing. The only, and then of course they're sobbing, I'm sobbing. Yes. The only thing that's really bad is that I feel like, like my responses are always inadequate to their emotional response. Like I, I don't know what else to do mm -hmm. besides take a selfie. Yes. <laughs> you know, and I'm like, this is really inadequate, but thank you so much. Because they feel changed by it. Yeah. So. I mean, a selfie can change a life, too. So, like, I think that's appropriate. Yes. yes okay. As long as you're not just like, okay, bye. And I know that you're not because you're a wonderful, gracious person. So I think, like, that means to, to have the chance to meet you means a lot to No, them, it's so. really. But I always feel like I wish I could do more. And, and I get a lot of letters saying, like, can we have coffee or lunch or mm -hmm. dinner? And I'm like, I, I, I can't because right. when I'm married. and Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. No, uh, and also just because you can't meet everybody. Right. But I want to. I really want to. You're working on the third in your Korean mm -hmm. trilogy, mm -hmm. but you're also working on your memoir. I am. This is amazing. Will you narrate that audiobook? Yes, I've been asked. Okay, great. <laughs> I mean, Have unless Meryl calls me, yes. we can arm wrestle. Yeah. <laughs> You can take turns. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll take the odd number, she'll take the even. Perfect. <laughs> right. I would listen to that, just so you know. Me so, too. Yeah. <laughs> okay. um, how has that process been for you with the memoir? I mean, that must be different than a novel. It's so different and so weird mm. because, first of all, it's called name recognition. Mm. And one of the things I'm trying to write about is what does it mean to be a visible person when you didn't grow up feeling visible or even wanting to be visible? So, and I think this is the experience of so many people who are introverts. Yes. Kind of like, ah, oh, are you looking at me? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what do I do? Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, I want to get um, into your musical taste a little bit more. Sure. So I'm going to give you an era of your life, and you tell me the song that, like, pops into your mind. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, you got this. Because you have lived many lives, I feel like. I, You've I, done so I, many cool things. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Um, and so I want to get a little bit more into what you have listened to over the years. So um, the first song that comes to mind when you were a teenager. Oh, Madonna. Okay. I went to the Like a Virgin tour. <gasps> wow. And I know my friend Billy Steinberg wrote that song. Wow. So talk about weird. Yeah. Billy Steinberg read my novel Pachinko and contacted me on Instagram. Right. And he goes, I'm a songwriter. You might have heard of my work. And I'm going, mm. <laughs> And I Google, I'm like, oh, no, I, actually, I know all your songs. Yeah. <laughs> and then so we're friends now. But I actually went to Like a Virgin, so it's not strange. That's amazing. And I love Billy Steinberg. Yes. Oh, wow. Love this. Um, the song that comes to mind when you were a corporate lawyer. Oh. I think Till Tuesday. Mm, okay. Because it was sort of related to my college and law school years. Mm -hmm. And Amy Mann is, you know, a goddess. Yes, absolutely. Um, the song that comes to mind when you wrote Free Food for Millionaires. Oh, I think... I think Peter Gabriel, isn't that odd? Peter yeah. Gabriel, Indigo Girls, again, Till Tuesday. Yeah. I think that kind of mindset, I was really interested in the 90s and mm -hmm. in, in, in late 80s. Yeah. I Those. also like New Order. Yes, absolutely, yes. <laughs> and I think New Order is actually a Korean band. Oh. I don't know if they know that, but. <laughs> Great. <laughs> yeah. They'll find out today. Yeah. By the way, New Order, you're yeah. Korean. Yeah. <laughs> well, like, yes. Yaz is actually Korean. They don't know that either, okay, but great. they are. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Yeah. Um, how about when you were writing Pachinko? Oh, Pachinko. Gosh. That's harder. Mm. That's harder because I was listening to so much um, music from around the world. Mm. But 
I think I got depressed a lot. It was really sad stuff. Yeah. And I actually listened to a lot of gospel. Oh, okay. So people like Mahalia Jackson. Yeah. And I, I listened to C.C. Winans. Ooh. And that was really helpful for me because it doesn't sound like anything related to Korea or Japan. Yeah. But I was trying to understand what missionaries are thinking when they're doing something really difficult. Mm -hmm. So I listened to a lot of gospel. That makes sense. C.C. Winans is incredible. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Um, how about the song that comes to mind when you're walking around New York? Oh, Jay-Z. Yeah. Uh, Alicia Keys, of yeah. course, and right, and Beyonce, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the song that comes to mind when you think of your family. <sighs> my family. Oh my gosh, this is really hard. <laughs> well, I listen to a lot of classical music because my mother was a piano teacher. Oh, yeah. So I recently heard um, Lim Yoon Chun. Ooh. He's the youngest Korean to win the band Clyburn. Wow. And I have his playlist on my Spotify. Excellent. So because my mother was a piano teacher, when I think of my family, really, I guess, yeah. I was lit my brain wasn't modern, but it's really classical music. Nice. And last one is, what's the song that comes to mind today? Today, I guess probably Dua. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's always Dua. It's always Dua. Yeah, it's always Dua. Um, incredible. Well, Min, it has been an absolute honor to have you here today. Oh. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Um, if you haven't already, or if you have, you can listen to both Free Food for Millionaires and Pachinko on Spotify in audiobook format, and that sounds like a pretty good time to me. So, plus all the songs that we talked about today, we're gonna put in our Hits the Spot playlist, so everyone will be able to listen to those as well, so. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, it'll be fun. That was so. really time effective. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. Um, Min, thank you so much, and we will look forward to all of the fun work that you still have to come, so oh, yay. There's more to do. Well, <laughs> oh, I've actually had a lot of fun today.